just a wrestling fan and a pretty good wrestler talking wrestling. This is episode 91 of the Bash Mania podcast and Vincenzo Joseph is back for more coffee talk. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Overcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, be sure to subscribe to Bash Mania. And if you enjoy this episode, be sure to leave a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It's Bash Mania! Let me tell you something, brother. He gave us everything he had in him tonight. What you gonna do when Bashamania runs wild? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. And business just picked up here on the podcast. Oh, yeah. We're back. More coffee talk. Are you drinking water there or coffee? I got both. I got my coffee okay. and I got my water. I got my glue sticker. Okay. Is, he, is yeah. he wrestling Tuesday night? Quiz? Yeah. I, dude, I'm so not, confused. Not that, not that I know of. We'll talk about the NWC card in a minute, but I'm yeah. so confused. Like, NWC has announced like four matches, and then Wolfpack comes out and announces like 20 college-aged matches and then there's so there's so much confusion right now but before we talk nwc there is a lot happening in wrestling which is good i didn't i was thinking about it just before we got on here world cup i didn't watch any did you i didn't watch it i didn't even know it was going on until it was going on (laughs) i watched like there was a couple times that i like was paying attention to it but I got to be honest, when the Americans aren't in it, I like I, I want to know kind of who wins and like what the general gist of, of it's going on is, but I don't really care. I care a little bit just because it's high level wrestling and, you know, it's I just, love it, wrestling. So 100% if it wasn't so hard to watch, that's my thing. You know what I mean? Like sometimes not hard to watch is in like, like what time is it on? What channel is it on? Okay. Like okay. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, like. I love watching it if, if I know like exactly where to watch it, how to watch it, who's wrestling. It's just it's hard to follow sometimes, and this week was just madness. It's even it's even hard to watch when our guys are overseas. Yeah, you know, wake we got to wake up at four in the morning to watch the worlds and stuff sometimes. So it's yeah, it's nuts. And at least then it's like I I feel like when Americans are overseas, th- there's like giant Twitter watch parties. Like, you yeah, can get yeah, on yeah. Twitter and you feel like you're yeah. sitting in a room with 20 guys watching it. Like, that's fun. And you also have, like, 30 reminders. Like, right. so-and-so's at five, so-and-so's at five, so-and-so's at five. You kind of keep that in mind. All of a sudden, it's like I was walking into an appointment this week, and it's like Rashid off wrestling. I didn't mm-hmm. really know when he was going to be up, or I would have watched that match, even though he got injured, which heard that's not good. But, yeah, I didn't that's, watch thanks, too much yeah, of it. But- I didn't either. So, Gross Gilman, I know you watched. I did watch Gross Gilman. What are your overall thoughts? We texted about it a bit. I, I'm. I think so. I think they're both good wrestlers, and yeah. that's you know that's my general just large overview of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things you could break down in that match. Um, I don't want to get into like officiating or anything like that yeah. either. Um, you know, sometimes there was you a just... lot of commentary around the grounding rule there was a lot like yeah and it's so like subjective sometimes too yeah i hate rules like i'm not like the guy who's gonna break down technique or the rules Mm -hmm. but for me i can't imagine how frustrating it is even more so for the casual fan where i'm like i thought that was a push out for gilman and i don't i'm like to myself i'm like ah maybe you just don't know there was something you missed i can't imagine for the casual fan like Wait a minute, he pushed right. him out. Isn't that one? <laughs> so even for even for guys like me, it's kind of hard to, ooh, you know, maybe he was grounded. Maybe he was on a foot. Maybe he was on both feet. It's hard to call. Um, yeah. I think the refs didn't do a terrible job that match. I really don't. I just think that, uh, you know, Seth Gross is just hard to finish on in those positions. He's he's very tactical when he wrestles a high level guy. Going in, I thought Gilman definitely had the upper hand in it, which I thought the same thing when. And what's that? No, yeah, keep going. And I I thought the same thing when Gross wrestled Soriano. I thought Soriano was going to have the upper hand, 
and Gross comes out, turns him late in the match, gets it done. And now I did it again here, and it's like officiating, however, everything else aside, like Gross continues to get it done. He just keeps on winning. And he wins a lot of matches where, like, you go back and look at it, and you're like, okay, well, that's never going to play out like that again. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, then, and then he'll, you know, something super, you know, respectful about Seth Gross is that the next time, too, it might not be the same way, but he'll, like, he finds a way to get it done a lot of the time. And it looked like he was giving his leg to, to Gilman. Like, I want to kind of get into yeah, his, his I want to kind of get into His the... lead leg, yeah, not his back leg. No, his yeah. lead leg, for sure. No, he yeah. was just like, and those are things I even pay attention to a lot. Like, I, I'm just kind of, a lot of times when I watch a match, I'm watching it 100% like as a fan, which I am. I'm not like a high-level wrestler that even thinks about lead legs, back legs. Like, I'm just like, okay, girls, give him the leg. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. I, and and he, he does a good job frustrating guys, too. Like, guys yeah. like Gilman and Suriano, who are very just – you know, business, like, you know, they're going to get to their leg attacks and they're going to wrestle hard and push the action the whole time. And Seth does an awesome job just frustrating those guys. And that's how he's able to score a lot of points too. What do you think would be the score of Spencer and gross wrestle soon? Oh, oh man. See, I, my predictions have been so awesome off the past week <laughs> we were so texting that about that during I don't, the, <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> even I don't even know I mean like I I mean I I would take Spencer in a in a close match just because you know he's Spencer grew but up it's always guy, interesting so like, we we were texting during the flow bracket and mm-hmm. you're like over oh, two <laughs> but it's uh, interesting uh, yeah. When when you see someone like yourself who knows wrestling, you've had a lot of success, and you're seeing something beforehand that you say, this is what I think is going to happen. I think Jordan Oliver is going to win the whole thing. And then he loses in the first round. And then it's like, to me, I'm starting to be like, okay, why did this happen? How did this happen? And that tournament, first of all, was a great tournament. I hope we see more of those. I would love to. I feel like the, I think it happened the first time, too, where it's like, Gabe Dean went out in the first round. Like yeah, it, these brackets do not seem to go the way absolutely anybody thinks they're going to go. They just have a lot of good guys in there. Pantaleo looked awesome. Obviously, Bajrang was awesome too. But just like, you know, that, that Ashnell Henderson match might have been my favorite match of the whole tournament. That was a sick match. They both looked good too. Yeah. And I feel like that match should go either way if they wrestled again. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't give either yeah. guy. I would 100% think they could go either way. Yeah, and, like, they're just – the way their styles are, Henderson really good at countering the shots, and Ashnall shoots a lot too. So it was just yeah. – it was a fun matchup. I was surprised that Bajrang – I didn't think about this till after that. Bajrang didn't go to the World Cup to come here for 30 days. Yeah, smart decision. Yeah, it says a lot about – now, I don't know – every wrestler – and I believe them, but every wrestler says, I don't do this for the money. If you're doing anything for the money within wrestling, you're probably got the wrong mindset. But you got to wonder, like, you know, he's getting feels against the top U.S. guys. And I think this is a lot for the depth and the talent right now in the U.S. It's also a nice payday. He was competing for $25,000. Gets to wrestle Zane now next week. He's training like, it's a smart move. I was surprised when I put two and two together that he didn't go to the World Cup to come here. Yeah, I didn't really even think of that as like an alternative for him, really. But I guess he could have done that as well. But if if I'm Bajrang, you know, what a great weekend! Like, it, it really doesn't get much better than this. You get awesome competition, and I'm, you know, I'm sure he's getting paid pretty decently for the NLWC match as well. So, and he gets to wrestle, you know, some of our best guys that have been rep- reps at the weight for the past few years. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, too, to see more foreign guys. I, I hope more more and more foreign guys come in to wrestle in these tournaments. It kind of throws it, you know, I'd like to see a U.S. guy win it. I, I would, too. <laughs> that would be but, nice. Yeah. But, you know, like James Green went home with, like, 15 grand. Alec yeah, went home awesome with 10 grand. Like, even Ashnall, 5,000. Um, I think it's great to get these guys paid. You know, obviously, as an American fan, I want the U.S. guy to destroy the foreigner in the first round. But... <laughs> oh yeah, we had a, we had a few guys over watching. We were all 
rooting pretty hard for the U.S. guys. But, yeah, it's, it's yeah. hard not. You can't, but you can't watch Bajrang and like root against that guy just because of how he wrestles too. It's just no. You have to be like this is a one hundred percent American America versus the world play. That's it. Yeah, that's that's. There's really no it. other you, reason to root against mm-hmm. Bajrang. No. Other than that, he's not American. But, man, his wrestling style is so fun, I think. He's just good. And what do you think if you're a guy like Ashnall who wants – and you didn't think Ashnall was going to make it out of the first round. I at least said he was going to lose in the second round. But I said it was going to be – hey, I said him and Henderson was going to be a good match. You did. And it was. You, you did was. say that, and it was. I just picked 100%. the wrong winner. If you're a guy like Ashnall, and I never – I'm always curious, and I'm curious in your opinion. If you're a guy like Ashnall, and you know if you – even want a shot at an Olympic or world medal. You got to be the guy like Bajrang. And it seemed like he was flat against that match. And I told you last week, like I thought Ashnall looked awesome at the Pan Ams. I don't know if it's a thing where it's just going to be hard for him to compete at 65, but at 70, I- I'd love to see him in green again at 70, I-, I think. But like, what's your takeaways as a wrestling perspective from that match? You get um, against a guy like that. He really just exposes areas you need to work on, yeah. and it's and it isn't even that. Oh, he was so much better than him. He was just yeah. a little bit better in certain positions, which help him kind of you know make that make that gap a little wider. But it there's Ashnall fix and then go back in that match and give Bajrang a you know a much better challenge, but. Yeah. I don't think you just call it. You don't just call it quits. You know, like, oh, I can't beat that guy. You just, you know, yeah. Back to the drawing board. Keep working on getting better. That's really it. Yeah, and Ashnault's a guy who has gotten it done, Mm -hmm. you know, throughout his whole career. So I have no doubt that he'll make the improvements. I'm just always curious. You know, like I saw Tariq Wilson um, tweeted out, like, expect a different guy. I've made. We'll see. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) Right, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, I and I think that's a. I love the tweet because I think it builds anticipation for any match when a guy says, I've made adjustments, you're going to see a different guy. I think it builds anticipation. But so, yeah. it's like, you better be prepared to back that up. Like, you better... And he's wrestling Nick Lee, right? <laughs> I mean, Coffee Nick? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's a that's a tough guy to, you know, talk a big game before the match against, especially if you really don't have a feel of him. I think Tariq Wilson's a good wrestler, and... I don't think he would say I don't think he would say that unless he meant it. Yeah. Like I, you know, um, he's part of that NC State group down there. I think they're all collectively a group of awesome guys. And, you know, if Tariq Wilson's saying that he's getting better and he's ready to come and he's ready for this match, then you know, you gotta believe it, right? I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I love all all the anticipation, all the hype we can get. You know, I was texting Roman about his vlog saying Mm-hmm. And I hope more wrestlers start doing this. Like just for the, for his first vlog, there's definitely more and more things he can do and should do to make it better. But the, the amount of just like simplicity to it, to see what a wrestler does. I'd love to see that from so many more wrestlers. I didn't even watch it. It's good. It's yet, like yet. Yeah, it's, I will watch it. It's like seven minutes long and it's simple. It's like, you know, I'm going to practice. I'm eating. I'm doing this a couple Q and A's. You're just kind of seeing a little bit more. And I think it does. Your fans want to know what you're doing. I tell this to clients all the time. It's like the number of times wrestlers will try to sit there and think, what should I post? What should I post? What should I post? It doesn't matter. Like if you just play to who you are if you love gambling and you tweet out every saturday this is my college football pick like you'll get engagement it has to be authentic and i do love that with what he's doing is just trying to create content you see at the ufc level you see that we've talked about it where you see these like the whole week you see the build-up and sometimes i watch it even if i'm not going to watch the fight because i like yeah. see like behind the scenes for athletes i think it's fascinating and i i hope we get more of that I think it's great for, you know, camps, fight camps, things like that. Yeah. Whenever, you know, if you're getting ready for a big event. Yeah. Um, but the, the only thing, though, about that is, you know, if you're an athlete getting ready for a big event and there's cameras following you around, that's just one extra stressor in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's definitely, it's a, it's a not fine line. Everybody. 
it's definitely no, it's not. not for everyone. But I think too, like there's different things different people can do. And I haven't seen really anybody vlog up to I've seen guys like David who will post leading up to a tournament, but I haven't seen too many guys or girls for that matter that will vlog and you know, even getting people to come on like here. Like I had said, we'll leave their name out, but I said, Why don't you get so and so on before Tuesday? And right. well, they're kind of shy or they don't really want to do it. Like you get that a lot. You get a lot of people who I feel like just. And that's fine. I yeah. I don't, I don't think there's a problem with that. And they just, people who, you know, they don't really want to do the media stuff. They don't want to go on the podcast and yeah. they're not, they're not going to get as much of a following either, but I'm per, like, same thing with me. I don't do a ton of media stuff. I do yeah. this. I'll post every here and there. And I, I don't have the biggest following ever, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think yeah, it's just give and I, take, really. I think it's different for everyone. And speaking of RBY and, and Nick, you know, NLWC event is Tuesday. So for those listening, go to rockfin.com slash NLWC. Subscribe to the event. It's going to be a good one. Snyder's back. I'm happy to see that. Snyder man is back. When, oh, yeah. Who hand makes every Brutus shoe. <laughs> I was dying at your Yeah, I actually I didn't even know that until <laughs> what was that a few days ago. I was surprised too. <laughs> I was cracking up. Um and I had when he came on the podcast a couple months ago, which that's a great episode to listen to too. I had asked him like and this is the typical wrestler thing when I'm like, so you got injured at senior nationals and you know, just want to make sure like are you good? Are you going to be wrestling soon? And there was nothing. It was just like, yep, I'm good. I'll be back soon. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, that was it. <laughs> That's such like the typical yeah, wrestling. No one, thing no one needs to know that. No, but like mm. I, I was leaning more towards like how long might you be out for? You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't, <laughs> right. don't say the injury, but I feel like that happened. My go to. My go-to is uh, I'll be back soon. That's that's it. Like, <laughs> and I'll, I'm I'll still waiting soon. for you to be back soon. <laughs> I'll be back soon. I will. I really will. <laughs> oh, this time he means it. <laughs> I mean, I mean it for real this time. We we have something that uh, we're working on. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. to hear about that. There's a lot going on in with the NWC event too. There's also double header. Uh, your boy uh, Pletcher leading the main event mm. for the Pittsburgh LP. wrestling club event. Oh yeah. Which by the way, I didn't know you guys were boys until I think was he on either one of you two were on the podcast the one day and it's like, yeah, he's outside in the Traeger. I'm like, Hey, what? <laughs> like it's so Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he was, he was up in state college doing something. I don't know. He was doing some shooting at M2 for something. And yeah, I've you known me and uh, me and Pletcher go way back. So we were growing out at the house and I think he, I, one of us were on the show. Yeah, and I can't then, remember which one. Yeah, I, either Maybe, way. But, I think uh, that was when you came on and, and you told – that's another great episode. You came on and just told five hilarious stories from your career. And I mm -hmm. think that's when he was on. That you got to go listen to too. But, you know, I love seeing all these duels. I saw there's uh, Lee Zach, Philippi are wrestling. Pletcher, uh, Pletcher and Habit are wrestling. There's the duel definitely has like we talked about with the Wisconsin duel that feel of course he wrestling yeah, too yeah yeah, yeah it, it's got that that typical duel feel like there's some really good matches and then some matches mm -hmm. where they want to get their guys matches, matches. And I, I love seeing that like you need that that's sustainable you saw it was with Wisconsin again they even had some youth level matches on there I see I didn't see the whole Wisconsin card I actually I dialed I, in I'd say about halfway through. I didn't even watch halfway through. I watched yeah. like I want to say I caught the match before maybe Drew Hildebrandt, and then I caught Wick in Monday, and then I caught Rona's match and Seth's match, and that was pretty much yeah. it. But that's what a lot of fans do with duels, and if you really want to watch Wisconsin, you really want to watch like Pittsburgh fans are going to be tuning into this entire duel. That's just the nature of it. And, and if you want to watch, you know, a card with a lot of really, really good athletes on it, then you watch the NOWC card. Yeah, well, that's the all-star. That's the <laughs> That's like the every every match is going to be. There was another one, too, the NLWC. I forgot which one that I was really excited about. Oh, Michael Beer, Nick Renan. That's yeah, going to be, be a good one. 
I, they might have wrestled at the scuffle. Did they? I'd have to. I'd have to look I'll into look that. I, quick. Yeah. I didn't think they had wrestled yet. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they would have wrestled and they missed out by a match or something. I don't remember. No, it was. Uh, you're right. What a brain. Forget Willie. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it looks like Beard won one nothing at the scuffle. Don't so like. that was that was a close match. Interesting that Mike was able to win a close match there. He's that's not his favorite thing ever. That was his closest match of the year. <laughs> well, Aside that he won my, probably. I'm looking at here. I don't even think he lost nah, he, two matches he, nine he lost seven. To, yeah, but he I'm lost. saying he didn't lose any one point matches. Yeah, he lost two point matches. Yeah, so yeah. the only one point match he won. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for all these matches. You know, another thing I want to talk to you about that I'm curious on your perspective. We talk about these exhibitions and these cards and these duels, and one of the things that I saw floating around this weekend on Twitter and I was thinking about it when Pantelio was wrestling Oliver. Now they're wrestling, I think plus three kilos. Do you think that matches that are on these, we'll call them exhibitions, even though I think this is the future. Do you think when you're wrestling at plus two plus three kilos, it should count towards seedings and rankings? I mean, rankings, not rankings, forget rankings, but like I, I, I only, no i say rank they're, like, of, like these cards seeds. they're not really you know usa wrestling they're not usa wrestling or even like uww sanctioned events so seating really shouldn't come into play especially if it's at you know at a weight allowance These guys are different up and down weights i don't disagree so like you think like Gross Gilman, that match shouldn't count towards Olympic trial seats. I don't think it should, but like, and I, I don't think they'll take it into factor either. They shouldn't. Yeah, it's just if this becomes the norm where there's less what, tournaments. What weight did they wrestle at there? I think plus three kilos. So yeah, I that's think a, it was, that's a lot. Right. And you don't notice it as much for the big guys, but for 57, 65, like, that weight, those weight classes, that's a huge difference. Or even like if Pantelio and Oliver are wrestling up at 68 that's kilos, that's so th three kilos. That's almost seven pounds. That's a different weight class completely. Yeah. And a couple of guys, I can't remember who, maybe no matter. Somebody was saying like, you know, overseas, a lot of these tournaments, tournaments are plus two, plus three kilos. Interesting. But I don't know. Like to me, when I was watching a guy, like what's Jordan Oliver and Pantelio look like? at 65 kilo scratch you know like I, I think some of these matches it's like i don't know i don't know if it should count i don't i don't think it matters a ton um i think if they want to count it then they should count it and if they don't like don't count it at least just be consistent don't count you know one match but not another if it's like don't say like oh like seth gross beat gilman so he's gonna bump over him but Gable won't bump over Quiz because of, yeah. you know, you, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. That's so, the like, point too. Like Gable Quiz, that weight probably doesn't mean nearly as much as it does when you're talking about a 57 kilo guy, but you well, gotta, you gotta set rules or something in place. Yeah. So I, I think either this, like the results either should or shouldn't count well, either right. one way or another, make, make them all count or make none of them count for seating. And I, and wonder, I, don't th I don't think they should just because they're exhibition matches. Do you think, though, you know, we've talked a little bit about trying to get these matches and how some guys won't wrestle, right? Do you think if, if the matches are 100% for or against implications with seeds, you'd see a change? Like some guys saying, well, I'm not going to wrestle because if I, let's say I lose to him at plus three kilos, it, it hurts me. If I beat him, it doesn't help me. Like, do you think that would change the mindset of some of these matches that are taking place? It could, if that's what, you know, if certain athletes are thinking about. Like, here's a case in point. I think that 
it, it looks like I was seeing on Twitter, Jaden Cox and Gabe Dean going back and forth. For, <laughs> yeah. For Jaden, very nicely. Like the very, most very friendly, <laughs> very friendly and polite. Yeah. The, the most, the absolute most polite exchange ever to set up a match. <laughs> but it's like Jaden making 86 is no easy thing. So you give him plus three kilos. That that's a big thing in his favor. Whereas if he wrestles down at scratch, like it's, it might be a different match. So I think you have to kind of just set it. Yes. Just so you guys know, if you wrestle, we're counting it towards seats or unless it's a USA wrestling, unless it's a UWW sanctioned event. No, we're not counting it. And, and I don't think they're going to. You don't think they'll come out and say one way or another. Or you don't think they'll count it. Um, well, but both, I don't think they're going to come out and say that these count or don't count, but I don't think they're, I just don't think it's going to count for seating. I think that, um, what I was saying before, whether it's, you know, seating or something like that, um, the reason why guys wouldn't take a match, I think more of an ego than a seating thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I know some of the matches that have been turned down and I know it's all ego. It is yeah. the, the ones that I've heard about are, but ego. some, some of it, some of it absolutely rightfully so though, I'm not saying ego is strictly in a negative way, but no, you know, I think it, there's a lot of different things with ego that come into play, whether it's, I only want to wrestle for my club. I only want to wrestle on mm -hmm. this platform. No, like, right. I only want to wrestle this opponent. Yeah. I'm not I, taking any other matches. Yeah. And I think when there are so many <laughs> different cards going on, like, in that polite Gabe Dean, Jaden Cox back and forth, it was like, hey, sorry, I can't wrestle you on the ninth. We're wrestling on the eighth. Do you want to wrestle on the 30th? You know what I mean? So they're starting to be that where, like, there is so many opportunities that you might be able okay. to pick, like, no, I want to wrestle you on home turf because mm. I want to be on this platform. I don't know. It's just I've definitely heard some of these matches and some of these matches are definitely like just pride ego. But there's also some matches I feel like knowing some of the mechanics behind some things. Some of these people want to wrestle on certain cards or they want to try to help their their uh, platform. But, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I, I imagine at some point there's going to be enough of a I think if you start seeing more and more upsets, I think you're going to have more and more more coaches reaching out to USA wrestling. Like I know Bono and I don't think Bono would do this, but if, if you're a Bono and you're reaching out to USA wrestling and saying, Hey, gross B Gilman, he better be seated above him at the trials. He better, you know what I mean? Like there are some coaches out there that I feel like are going to do that. There's some crazy coaches out there. That's funny. Bono That's wouldn't do that, but I'm just saying like, I could see coaches getting behind their guys and saying, Hey, this counts, right? You better see them. I mean, some of these people are, are crazy with seeds, and I've never been in a tournament where it absolutely matters. I mean, I've wrestled like JV, and, <laughs> <laughs> and so I say that loosely, um, and I know how you feel. Or it's like, just go out and wrestle. You're going to have to win three, four matches yeah. regardless of who you got to wrestle. You got to you gotta beat the best guy to win the tournament, typically. So, Yeah, and I mean, yeah, there, there's so many – like I feel like the wrestling fans sometime seating's more. seating's much more seating's more for the fans rankings hundred percent for the fans you think seating, seating's more for the fans it's it's a good way of you know organizing a tournament and it's good for fans and, too to and, have an idea of of who's technically supposed to win well, that's why but, I like gambling <laughs> yeah exactly that's why I like lines and and yeah. Like, I guess both sides of the argument can be on full display at the 2018 World Championships. David Taylor gets Hassan Yazdani first round. Yeah. Now, he won, and he mm -hmm. won the whole tournament, won a World Championship. Didn't matter. There's a lot of people who say, well, they should have been on the opposite sides. That should have been a finals match. And I've you've seen it a lot, like at World Championships and Olympics, where someone has a quarter or a semi that's harder than their final. But – like you're saying, a guy's going to have to win three, four matches regardless. Just go and go make it happen. But I don't know. I guess if you're the number one guy, you don't want to necessarily wrestle the number two guy fresh out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, probably not. Uh, I mean, but at the same time, though. You got to like, beat him no matter what. But wouldn't you yeah, have like, in the finals? I don't, I don't think it matters for you personally because, you know, you got to be ready to go all the time. 
I think it's it's cooler, you know, just for like for an environment or just, you know, for a sporting event. It's for the best if the best competitors are you know, against each other in the finals. But it happens, though. Yeah. And from a marketing standpoint, I, I do think seeds help from a marketing mm-hmm. standpoint to, yeah. to build the anticipation, build the hype. But wrestling doesn't do a great job with that anyways. Like, I'm much more fixated on what the Steelers seed is going to be in the playoffs because I'm a fan in that aspect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, no matter what, I think the uh, Dave Porno actually said this today, so I'll give him credit. But I agree. I think the winner of the Bills Chiefs game, if they play in the playoffs, is going to win win everything. I think the winner of that game wins the Super Bowl. As a Bills hey, fan, we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. I mean, and after the Bills dominant display this weekend, we're like forty one nineteen or something. Mm-hmm. Did you see the video of Josh Allen coming home to Buffalo? No, I didn't. Oh, dude, you got to watch it. Josh Allen put it on his Instagram story. Dave Portnoy shared it out. There's literally probably a thousand people at the Buffalo airport at oh, like yeah. 3 a.m. just cheering with Buffalo signs for Allen. Yeah, he's awesome. He's perfect for the Bills, man. Oh, he is Bills Mafia. Like, yeah. there's, there's, I, it sucks that I bought season tickets this year and this is how they play and like couldn't go. It'll be good for a bit, so. Oh, well, next year, if, if you know, no matter what, I know the Bills are going to come back strong, yeah. and hopefully everything's back to normal by freaking next September. You'll come mm-hmm. up for a game. With oh, yeah, the Coffee talk, coffee, coffee talk, talk, tailgating Bills edition Mafia. with Bills yeah. Mafia. Yeah. <laughs> Just be. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, that, that's, that's a given no matter what. I'm trying to think what else I had to talk to you about. That was kind of wrestling that's been going on this week last week um there's going to be some more cards yeah, we're kind of just up soon. This. yeah i think it looks like austin o'connor yanni was announced for a tar heel I, wrestling club event but like yanni didn't tweet it and i didn't text him like hey is this like official but <laughs> um i did see that also that that'll be an interesting match i think austin o'connor is super under the radar i think he's a good wrestler I do too. It, it's one of the many benefits, or not benefits. It's one of the many implications from not having NCAA this year. I feel like there was a lot of storylines that were going to unfold, mm-hmm. and I know you obviously didn't like that. <laughs> it was canceled. No, nah. no, I didn't. I didn't like that nationals were canceled, but the, yeah, there it, was. It, so, it had to happen. <laughs> there were so many storylines. I think that would have played out that, like, I keep thinking about, like, wait, well, how did that? How did NCAA Blaze finish at that weight with, with so-and-so? Then it's like, oh, crap. Uh, that sucks. It, it, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't happen. That's why I'm wondering what happened. Yeah, I still can't believe we didn't get NCAA Blaze this year. Is what it is. Maybe we could run it back at some point. <laughs> Man, that, that seems to be it for things that are going on in wrestling right now. There's uh, there's the Burroughs Taylor match coming up now in like two and a half weeks. I hope they start announcing that card soon. I think, I think they're going to, it sounds like maybe they were trying to get Jaden Gabe on for it, which clearly didn't happen. That that would be, that would be awesome. A co-main event with Jaden would be great. I mean, especially since, you know, they, they had a big weekend this weekend. Flo did. So they'll probably start announcing stuff next week. I'm assuming. Yeah, I'll give Flow credit too. They that event went off great. The stream worked great for me. There wasn't too much fluff aside from interviews going a little long, which I'm like, ooh, a little long at the end there. You know, the the post match. But when you grab someone off the mat, they shouldn't really be there for like five plus minutes. No, it. I, I'm always uncomfortable when like, and don't get me wrong. Like after NCAA's, it has produced some gold. Like Bo's WWE. That's what we do. Rant. Yeah, because because it's like thirty seconds, <laughs> right? Like they can't for 30 be thirty seconds. It can't be longer than that, or it's just yeah. like it gets to be. And I also think you need the right guy, like the guy from ESPN, oh, yeah. Quint, who does it. He he needs to go. <laughs> we, we need like <laughs> it's always cringeworthy when it's like you're you're like celebrating. It's like oh, what's he gonna say to this guy? But we need to get someone he's, like he's you need like a hey wrestler. um. What did he say to me? He he says like he's like hey he's like um, what were you thinking when you did that move? <laughs> um, I was thinking about doing the move that I was doing. I don't I don't know. 
Yeah. But- How'd that feel? <laughs> Felt good, man. Felt good. <laughs> It's always funny when it when it does produce like the WWE rants, but those awkward ones that are just like, yeah. So, talk us through your mindset when you were losing in the second period, <laughs> and you're like gasping for breath. You're like, <gasps> I was trying to get my face off the mat. Like this. I think the post match interviews are are great if they're done correctly. If you could pick one person to do post-match interviews for every event, Olympic trials, NCAAs, Big Tens, doesn't name, doesn't matter. One person, who would you think it would be? One person. Oh man, I don't know, like anybody. And, every, and anybody listening, tweet us who you think. Who would you want to interview people for like thirty seconds, a minute, whatever it is, after? Every match. I'll tell you what. You know who a low key guy I might pick oh. is Shane Sparks. He no, he's not bad. Like I've, he's got a lot of I've energy. Done. He's he's fun. He does not for Big Ten. He does not for Big Ten. Yeah, that's what. When I was thinking about Big Tens in my mind, and he's a brain. Like yeah. he came. We were. Um, I was by the mat at Big Tens, and he walked by and he just leaned over. And he just started telling me like stories. I don't remember what match it was, but it was like just going on and on about stories. Like, and this guy's dad one time went fishing with this guy's cousin. And then they talked about this moment happening. It's like, he just pulls stories out of nowhere, but he, he's a guy who I like his energy. I think a wrestler who's been there is the guy who I would pick. I don't know who that wrestler is, but I definitely think someone who's had the experience was like, Oh, Oh, Johnny did you <laughs> that would that would definitely be an there. interesting he's, one he's he, he's funny he's funny he's very very personable yeah that I'm wouldn't be to, bad i'm trying to think who i would pick from from us um i think thompson would be great for eric thompson yeah. would be good at that, yeah but um yeah i don't know We'll have to think about it. And for those listening, tweet us who you think would be good. I I see people try it. And it's always like, sometimes it's awkward when you see somebody says like, try too hard. So the Shane Sparks, um, like the only thing, like he did that one time with me that I, and I didn't like it because he called me captain smooth. I didn't like that name. (laughs) I remember that. A ton, a ton. Yeah. He was like, what do you think of your new nickname? And I was like, Oh, it's, it's great, but <laughs> it's a great, but he, he's I'd got like, like to go dad jokes. something else. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's got yeah. like those dad jokes. I think you need a wrestler who's won NCAAs, who's won big matches, who's walked off and like had that I'm out of breath moment. I don't, I don't necessarily know about that because really, I don't know. I think no. I feel like if when you can relate, I feel like it goes a long way. So, like, when you can, when you know, like. Okay, I know exactly what this guy's feeling right now from a standpoint of winning NCAA is walking off the mat. Like, I'm not going to be a Quint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just you got to find someone who's, you know, I like some sort of understanding, maybe not necessarily someone who played the sport, but like, you know, um, yeah, just really someone who has an idea. It's over- kind of like how NFL uses guys like Brady Quinn to commentate. You know, and I, I think like you've done good. I think David and Bo have all done good commentating with Big Ten and, and on Rockfin mm-hmm. and stuff. But I, I do like seeing that. You know who's a guy who I think might excel? Bryce Meredith. Yeah, Bryce can talk to anybody too. So like I think even commentating too, like not just doing matches, mm-hmm. like interviews, I think he can commentate. Yeah, he's a smart guy too. So yeah, he just picked up my he- head. What's that? Yeah, he just popped in my head as I'm thinking of like going through NCAA's and going through people. Yeah, B money. He wasn't ready to scrap, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of how that match with James Green ended with him? I thought Bryce was wrestling tough for a little bit, but I mean, I feel bad. Yeah, but don't walk in the center. Yeah, Not ready you, to go. You and, and, ready to go. And I'm sure you know he wasn't thinking that in his head either because. He was he was trying to get the brick thrown. Yeah, yeah. But, and Reese said that after Reese tweeted, like I thought about I I should have thrown the cube. I should have, but it happens. 
does happen. You got anything else? All right, yeah. Last question, Zane yeah. Bajrang. What are you thinking? I think Zane wins by two. Really? Yeah, I think Zane wants this match really bad. He lost to Bajrang at Mateo Pelicone, right? He lost. I, I'm not sure where it was. I think. Yeah, I think it was. Right. I think it was over there. And I, I know Zane. I know he wants this match, but so I and I really think Zane will get it done. I think there's a lot of, a lot of like. Bajrang won, and he's got to travel now. He's got a lot of people like you did so good. You did so good. I don't know. I see like that that uh, victory hangover effect, and I think it goes Zane's Zane's way. And I could see that too. And obviously, I'm biased towards Zane. Likewise, <laughs> Zane. I think Zane is one of the best in the world at finishing leg attacks. Yep. And I think that's going to help him in this match too. I think he'll. I think he wins by a point or two. I'm. I'm always shocked if Zane ever loses mm-hmm. because he's yeah, just he's so aggressive. Like there's never a match where Zane goes out. Like in, in a lot of his matches, he loses internationally are like last second losses or like within the last 10 to 15 seconds. Zane doesn't mm-hmm. get beat like 10, three. And it's just, no. And it's just a little, it's, I don't want to say like a brain fart because it's not, it's, it's some little position, some little freestyle yeah. position all is too. So yeah, I, th- I think he finally gets over the hump and I think yeah. he gets it done. And that will say a lot too for Zane after Bajrang runs the gauntlet a couple days mm-hmm. ago. And if Zane yeah. can take him out, I think yeah. that's, that's going to be fun for 65 kilos for the U S I think so too. And I also think so like, I think that in the that finals match too, where James Green, I think that he potentially could have put some more points on the board. I know it's hard, you know, easier yeah. said than done, but just the way Bajang wrestled out of some of those positions. So I think, yeah. I, I think Zane might be able to finish in some of those places too. And Were you surprised Green couldn't turn him with the lace? I don't know. He's a self-proclaimed lace man, right? So, <laughs> yeah. um. If the self-proclaimed lace man wants to be the lace man, he got to finish that. Yeah. No, I agree. He, he just, like, stopped. Like, Bajrang just kind of – he must have a strong core. He, he, just, he has to, yeah. Because greens – I mean, I've seen great green lace people where, like, oh, yeah. their ankle is, like, swollen after. So, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Zane yeah. Bajrang, Tuesday night, that's going to be good. I think Zane gets it done. Are you commentating? Do you know if you're commentating? I don't know if I'm commentating. I'm sure they'll probably tell me uh, the day before or the day of. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, yep. we'll have to hop back on next week because there's a lot of good wrestling coming up. Hopefully this, you're coming back soon. Hopefully soon there's some kind of announcement. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll say something. Awesome, man. Enjoy the rest of the day. See ya. Take care. And that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. If you did enjoy this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more episodes. For more wrestling content, be sure to follow Bash Mania on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And follow me. I'm at jbash on Instagram and at justinjbash on Twitter. I'll be back with another episode shortly. See ya. And the beat goes on.